So uh, I think most Nigerians right now, or at least Nigerians that I know on social media, they have this progressive view of where they want the country to be. Mm -hmm. Especially, for instance, in the political space, people want like you know someone to just come from nowhere and be, like a dark or someone like yourself to just come and say, oh, I'm running for this, and people would vote for him, right? Uh, but where we want the country to be is a whole different thing from where the country is. Like, what we want is different from what the reality is. And the reality currently in Nigeria, in Nigeria's political space, is that political parties win elections. Mm -hmm. They are very pivotal to it. Yeah. But you want to run for president, and in six months of the election, you don't have a known political party yet. How are you swinging that? Um, well, this. Huh. Okay. That should be interesting. Yes, it is interesting. <laughs> so, what's today? Uh, Friday. Yeah. No, this does it. Two days ago, um, I after after several months of talking to different parties and trying to make sure that you did know, you have to talk to all ninety one of them? Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> um, to in, in ensuring that my ideologies and vision or the vision of our movement aligns with any party we align with. Um, is important. Um, we decided to go with one. What party is this? I'm not familiar with this. Exactly. Uh, it's called the Advanced Allied Party, AAP. Right? Okay. And uh, part of the reason people would ask why, I'll tell you why. So the leadership, um, for one, so their, their symbol is a golden spoon. And like I told you, our f very first solution is feed the people. Um, okay. For them, the spoon is symbolic of you know, access to food uh, for anyone. So for the rich, for the poor, for the old, for the young, for the male, for the female, um, we all have to eat. Someone right? said this one is not big enough. You say it's not big enough? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just a symbolism, a golden spirit, right? Um, but for me, more importantly, they shared the same ideologies that I shared, right? Um, and their leadership was comprised of different organizations um, that are important for us to be successful. Um, so we we bring a lot to the table. We bring the vision, the ideology, the the um, technology, and all of that. Uh, but we needed a party that has structure um, that could um, help us get into all thirty six states. Because we understand that for you to win, um, not only do you need popular vote, you need to have at least twenty five percent of the votes in two thirds of the nation. Um, uh, so it was important for us to make sure that this was not just you know a playtime hobby. Right, um, but uh, whosoever we are aligning with was one who had the capacity um, to get the message across, but also the machine uh, to drive the votes out. Um, and AAP did that for us. That's one, two. AAP um, embraced, you know, the, the the importance of youth leadership. So to join the party, to run to run for office on the party. Um, the candidates between 18 and 25, or technically between 25 and 35, um, um, you know, don't get to pay for the forms. So it's, it's free because we want to encourage more young people uh, to run for office. Um, so there, we, in, we can go into more details, but I'll save some of it because our official lunch uh, is in a couple of weeks. Um, but okay, wait, so this is one of the new parties that were recently yes, registered. One of the new oh. parties. So, um, and it was important to make sure that you aligned yourself with people who embrace that. It's not going to be easy, right? Because you know, yeah, um, you, you present some ideas and they push back, and you push back, and we come to a consensus. And that's what's important to making sure that everything we put out, all of our strategies, all of our you know, um, um, techniques or whatever we do, um, mm -hmm. is aligned with our vision. And the most important thing I've told people is that we have a shared ideology and a shared vision to make sure that we can build an amazing Nigeria. I'm sure you've heard me say amazing Nigeria. <laughs> yeah, well, I just have to say this because, I mean, um, AAP. Yes. Um, not a lot of people know them. No, I no, mean, no. Obviously, they are Very new. Soon you'll be and like I said be, uh, before we started this, um, I said political parties win elections. Yes. And for most Nigerians right now, what they are looking for is a thought force because there's the All Progressive Congress mm -hmm. and then there's the People's Democratic Party mm -hmm. who people are expecting mm -hmm. to win. People are expecting, oh, the winner has to come from one of these parties. Mm -hmm. And the PDP actually feels like um, there is, it doesn't even have enough muscle that it had to go into a coalition with 38 other parties mm -hmm. to form the CUPP, yeah. right? So what chance do you think your party stands against 
this competition all right so when we launch you when i told you capacity and structure when we launch you start to understand the reasons why um the people who came together to form this party right are, are the leadership of the national youth council um you have several civil societies you have several trade unions several women organizations um i'm forgetting one. Oh, and a very famous big organization that i cannot mention the name for now until you um, launch yes you hopefully it depends. Um, that actually gives us a base of, I want to say, between three and 11,000 people in each state. In each state, right? Which means, um, membership-wise, between two and 300,000 starting up. Across the country? Yes. How many is this again? 300,000? Between, between two and 300,000 minimum, and that's just being conservative. I don't know, my, my mathematics is not that good, but I don't think that would be enough to win a presidential uh, election. No, I said membership. Yeah, I understand. Right? Now, that's two, two or 300,000 ambassadors you have in your state who are going out to campaign. There is no party, not even your PDP or APC, that has that structure right now. Really? Yes. You think the PDP or the APC does not have 300? Card carrying members of their parties. 300,000 card carrying members? 300,000, yes. I doubt it. Huh. I mean, I don't have their register, but I, I, I would imagine that they have that kind of structure. They have people. They may have people, but. Do they? Okay, so no, no, you are, you are talking forget, about ambassadors, but also. Don't forget also that there are 91 parties today, right? Yes. Um, most of them too have had spillovers from some of these. From people understanding that these two parties are people are parties that have swindled us for the last twenty years, are parties that have stripped you and I of the future we're supposed to have. Our parties are forcing young people out and causing a nation of brain drain, right? Um, so when you start to talk about the the detriment of aligning with these two parties that have been in power, you start to see why twenty nineteen is going to be a different year. Okay, that Very should be that should be interesting. Year. What do you think about the National Assembly? Um, I'm not going to say anything on that for now. Why? I, I, very intentionally. I have my very strong opinions about it. You don't want to express them in public? Not yet. No, no, no. I will in due time. Because um, a lot of Nigerians over the years have had trouble with our... I think you are not going to answer this, this question, are you? No, go ahead. Okay, so many Nigerians, I think one of the biggest problems Nigerians have with the National Assembly currently mm -hmm. is that they feel they have, they, it's an important institution, yeah. correct? But they also feel it's coming at too much of a cost mm -hmm. to the nation's yep. finance, right? For instance, a senator came out recent, um, earlier this year and said they have a 13.5 million um, they collect monthly as running costs yep. that he himself doesn't even understand what it's for. Yep. And the commission that's supposed to oversee the um, the allowances of government officials came out and said, look guys, we are supposed to review what these guys get, but we don't even know where they are getting 13.5 million era monthly from, right? So would you, as president, mm -hmm. or as an aspirant currently, mm -hmm. recommend something of a pick cut for the National Assembly? Yes, definitely. Definitely. It's, it's, it's thievery, in my opinion. Um, there is absolutely no reason why you should be taking on 13.5 million a month. Meanwhile, the average Nigerian lives on two dollars, less than two dollars a day. That's that's criminal. That's evil. That's I'm looking for the most. <laughs> yes, exactly. So you already know where my strong opinions come from. Okay, but well, let's come back. But but it's an institution <clears throat> that I think is important because. But the House and the Senate are supposed to serve as checks and balances for the president, right? So will I scrap it? No. Do we need to restructure it? That's a decision the nation needs to make, not the president. Um, because for me to make that decision as a president is looking for ways to curtail, you know, um, checks and balances. However, though, um, it has it's extremely important. It's extremely important that it's effective in what it's there to do and not to strip the nation of its resources, especially when you have governors who are taking pensions, who force themselves in there and are doing nothing. Yes. So, yeah, that's... <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so you go back into the country two weeks ago, 
correct? Less than two weeks ago. Okay, yeah. and you, I, I saw your Insta story, I think you were holding a picture of your, uh, you were holding up your PVC. Oh yes, I have my PVC card. So, like, was is that new? Yes, it is new. So you just got it. So, yeah. um, my question is, how is it possible that a 35 year old Nigerian, mm -hmm. right, that apparently cares for the country, mm -hmm has not never before deemed it fit to participate in this electoral process how how do you convince people that might want to speculate mm -hmm. that your run for president is uh it's a ruse to uh ping right off the back of the novelty of the not too young to run law and possibly just get your face out there so that people will be like oh you're that guy that ran for president how do you convince people that um, that's not what's so happening if it were popularity contest right I think I would have done myself better favor doing popularity contests in the U.S. or globally than coming to embed myself in a system that we all classify as being extremely violent and dangerous. That's one. Two, um, I left at 19. The average, at, when I left in 2002, um, the average 19-year-old did not think about voting. That's one. Two. Um, the last 16 years, you have and you still have people today who do not believe in the process, in the electoral process. I was here in 2015 um, during the Jonathan Buhari, um, um, you know, competition, right? And um, the one thing I didn't understand, I thought the country was doing a little better under Jonathan, you know, it was tribing. Uh, but everyone complained, oh, he, the, 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 the administration was corrupt and all that. But the one thing I didn't understand was why a nation of 180 million people that at the time I thought was at least 50% young people put out a 70-something-year-old man who had been a head of state before as the right um, 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 uh, alternative to Jonathan, that did not make any sense to me. So I had nothing against him. I had nothing in my heart for him either. Because I'm like, whatever it is you guys are putting him out to do, I am sure we can find a 40-something-year-old or even a 50-something-year-old that can do that with vigor and, you know, I'm doing better. And of course, we're proven right, right? Someone said, someone said our current president is... <laughs> as an ambassador to, to, to the UK. <laughs> yeah, that's a right? common joke. Um, so when you say, well, you just got your PVC. Remember I told you, um, was it you I told the, the last interview? I said, um, when I decided to run, you know, um, last year, pretty much, I, I was very hurt by the fact that my parents, who had spent 30, 40 years of their lives serving the nation as civil servants, could not get paid pensions, pensions, pensions. Only 3% of Nigeria's population is over 65, and we don't know how to take care of them, right? That troubled me. That gave me sleepless nights. And then in D.C., I came across, you know, governor, the governor of my state, and I asked his people, I'm like, why have you guys refused to pay pensions? And the response I got was, well, you know, um, who said we're not paying pensions? You know, the people saying they're saying, but... You know, when we ask the governor, the governor says he's paying pensions. Why would anyone say they're not getting paid if they're getting paid? Yeah, Especially, why would my parents tell me they're not getting paid <laughs> if they're getting paid? You get what I mean? Um, so that did not make any sense to me. Especially when I sat down and listened to my governor talk about, oh, we're building a new city next to Abba. Like, wait, what? <laughs> you haven't paid teachers. You haven't paid healthcare professionals. You haven't paid pensions. You're talking about you're looking for investment. You just flew in from Singapore. You're headed to India or whatever else to go look for investors to come build a new city in Abba. <laughs> Fix the one we have first, <laughs> yeah. right? Um, so when people say, well, you know, you have not been involved in the process, there was nothing to believe in almost at the time as a young person who has seen the same crop of people run the nation. Before I came out, we had made calls. We called over 100 people, and I asked them. I was trying to gauge, you know, um, the heartbeat of the people with regards to the election. And there were four categories of people. There was that one group that were like, listen, we're not involved in this process. We don't care about the elections. We're just not engaged, period. There was a second group that was like, well, you know, we have our PVCs, PVCs but we're not going to vote. 
because it's going to be rigged or you know um they're going to buy votes stomach infrastructure right you had the third group that had their pvcs said you know we're going to vote but we of the 20 something or 30 something candidates at the time um we don't see anyone who's inspiring enough and then you had the fourth category that were either you know followers of one person or had two options and they were yet to decide and we're all open the the common thread amongst all four groups is we're all open for the person with the right ideology so i'm in it for the long run i'm in it for the trial okay yeah since we briefly talked about the president what would you consider the one thing Mm -hmm. that this current president has done right that we think to run signing what that wasn't really is like all you had to do was sign it or not sign it so you think you think three years of worry the one decent thing is done is signed the not young to run bill well um so i I say this right um i'd actually say yes you know why because it has given my generation hope is given my generation the ability to sit back and say, we can actually do this. A 25 year old now can run for the House of Assembly, yeah. right? Prior to that bill, <clears throat> that was not an option. You get my point. Yeah. Prior to that bill being signed, I would not have been here. Right? So if you're saying that's like the one thing is done right. Mm-hmm. Um, what because we- it will impact our future. Okay. So that means there's like a sea of options to pick from when I ask you what do you think is the most prominent failure? What line of failure do you think the president crossed that you're like, nah, this man cannot return? Um, so I don't, I don't like to focus on failures, right? I like, um, I like to, I say, there are a lot of candidates who will talk about what's No, but wrong. you would not be trying to mm. unseat the president if he has not failed. Now, no, no, that's not true. Okay. And trying to unseat the president may not necessarily be about failure. And we could talk about that. But like I said, I don't like to talk about failure. However, the more important thing to me is understanding that for us to drive our nation into the future where it needs to be, it needs to be someone who understands that vision. Someone who has that vision to do it. And the president does not have that. Not because he's, well, I don't want to say not because he's incapable of doing it. At this point, he is incapable of doing it because... The, the, his, the years that have shaped who he is cannot lead us into the, ton, into the fourth industrial revolution. And I am sense. concerned about my future, <clears throat> my present, my future, and the future of my posterity. And he doesn't have what it takes to lead us in that. Okay, let's come back to you um, about your chances, mm-hmm. actually. So do you think if, say, I walk into a rural village in, say, a bar, or say Sokoto State I'm or one in, village, by the way. I mean, there, 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 oh, so, okay. let's say I walk into a rural village in your state mm-hmm. um, or like in Sokoto State or in Oshun State mm-hmm. and I pick someone at random mm-hmm. and uh, ask them, do you know Chike? Uh, Chike Okaibu, do you think they'll be able to say, oh yes, I know him, is that guy running for president? Do you believe I can find someone like that? Because I think the, the question here is how in tune are you with the uh, political base with the electoral with elect the electorates that are not online where it's easier to find you okay how are you connecting with them um before before um jonathan became president you didn't know or or even vice president you didn't know who he was no he was the governor he was he was the governor of the governor or deputy governor he was the governor governor, then he was governor governor. yes but you still didn't know him at the national level. well i i think most people I mean, he came in as the um, vice president, mm-hmm. and then he was president. So yeah, most people yeah. consider that an advantage, but that's not the same thing. Well, no, no, no. About so what, I, what I'm saying here is, and of course, he had the PDP when too. People, when people say exactly, that's I'm, I'm driving, I'm coming right there. When people say, well, you know, the the the, the young 18 year old in Zamfara State or in this rural area does not know who you are. That's why we're doing this. Right? You did not know who I was until you heard about me. Does not I mean, found you online. I'm exactly. talking about the people that don't... Because I don't think... That, that's my point, right? Okay. So, you know, publicity helps to do that. That's one, too. A party, that's the importance of a party. That's why I told you, before I decided to go with a party, it had to be... It, it was important to me that they had the structure and the capacity to reach that person you're talking about. To say, hey, this is what our ideology is, right? And here's the person who's carrying that vision. And we need you to trust them. And then they introduce me to that person for them to understand, oh, wait, where has this person been all this time? So, no, I don't need that person to know me now. 
but I'm hoping that before the elections, they get to know me. Mm -hmm. And that's what strategies are for. That's what campaign, uh, campaigns are for. That's what parties are for. I guess that makes sense. But I didn't continue off of this. So, and I want you to answer this like really honestly. I know you're a politician now, so you probably have to dribble around it. But when you really take everything into consideration, mm -hmm. right? The political landscape, mm -hmm. you yourself, mm -hmm. the opposition, the electorate, every single thing that goes into a presidential election. Mm -hmm. Do you honestly believe that you would be elected president next year? If I didn't believe that, I won't be running. The simple answer is yes. There's no running around it. Okay. There's no running around it. Okay. Um, I guess my final question to you is, mm -hmm. so there's this uh, common criticism that comes up mm -hmm. about people that come out of the blue to um, campaign for office, to run for office, mm -hmm. right? For instance, you... I didn't know you until you declared for president mm -hmm. in uh, June, mm -hmm. right? And there are a whole lot of presidential aspirants who are the same, mm -hmm. right? Some of them are already in the public eye and they yeah. are declaring most to election or people are just knowing, oh, you are actually into politics, most to election. So the criticism is, where have you been, right? Mm -hmm. Why have you not been with us from the first day against this government or like scrutinizing this government? Um, um, I think the thing is, my question here is, what happens if you don't win the election next year? Mm -hmm. Are you going to stay and build your party mm -hmm. over the next four years mm -hmm. and come back again in 2023? Mm -hmm. Or are you, say, going to return to the United States and then uh, come back six months to 2023 <laughs> presidential election again? Because people that's feel like uh, people that want to run for office, mm -hmm. they should be there throughout they should be visible people should know what you are saying people should know what you think about every single thing that the current government is doing mm -hmm. so what is going to happen after 2019 well, if you're not the president people don't need to know what i think about every single move of the government no, but what, so what, what me, i mean is you have explain. to be politically engaged people have yes, to feel like yes, you are standing with them every I step of the way saying. so let me tell you something right this this race is about conviction for me right um i did not decide well hey the fun thing to do is go around for president so let's do it no and if you realize the three things that my platform is is built on education tech and entrepreneurship are things that have defined my life goal right so they are things that i've been working on for the past 10 12 13 years right um which means that come february 16 regardless of what happens even though i know that my 36th birthday would be my inauguration um but regardless oh. of what happens I will still be working on the three on this the same thing I'm working on. Now, people say, well, if you don't win this time, would you do it again in 2023? It would have to be about conviction. Does not mean that if I decide not to run in 2023, that I will be disengaged from the process. It's making sure that if I discover the right person then, that I'll throw my support behind them and do everything I can to make sure that the vision we have, the ideology we share. Um, for the nation, as long as it benefits every single Nigerian, is what we're going in for. But that's all the buts. Because I know come February 16, I'll become your president elect. Hmm. And after that, let's sit back again and talk about it. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. Um, this has been really interesting. Uh, I hope you have been able to convince some people, I don't know, maybe not convince some people. So, We'll probably still do this before the election. Sure. It depends on how everything goes. So I hope you have uh, good luck with that. Thank Thanks. you very and much for go, this. Go, go become uh, yeah, I look for, I, I look for, member. <laughs> I look forward to AAP. your lunch too. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Thanks. Yeah. I appreciate it.